وأقيمنا الصلاة ونسوك ونحيا يا ممامة لله رب العالمين لا شريك له وفي ذلك أمرت وأنا أعوذ المسلمين أشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وأشهد أن محمد عبده ورسوله أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم أما الإنسان إذا ما بتله ربه فأقرمه ونعمه فيأكل ربي أقرما وأما إذا ما بتله فقدر عليه رزقه فيأكل ربي أحيانا والعصر إن الإنسان لا في كسر إن الذين عملوا وعملوا الصالحات وتواصل بالحق وتواصل بالصبر <تصفيق> السلام عليكم Last week, somebody asked about the Day of Judgment. So I won't be exhausted here because it's a football, but I want to kind of orient to you to kind of like what Muslims kind of believe about the uh, Yom Kiyama, the Day of Judgment. When we read all of these leadership manuals for our jobs, uh, uh, I should say self-improvement manuals, everybody asks you to start with the end in sight. You should look at your life um, after it's all done and then plan, back plan uh, for your goals. Now, as, as a Muslim, this is consistent with what we believe. A Muslim should always be looking with the end in sight. The very Muslim prayer, the, the, not the prayer, the dua, it says, Rabbana atina fi dunya hasanatin wa fil akhirati hasanatin wa kina dhabinah. It says, Allah, give us the best of this world and what? the hereafter and save us from the fire you know so this implies that you are striving and doing your very best to balance the mizan this world and seeking to get yourself to the hereafter so today i want to uh show you inshallah a small picture of what we call the day of judgment uh and and, and coincidentally before I, before i start it's, it's It's interesting that people say in Islam, they say we are work righteousness religion. We we trying to work to get into heaven. You know, that's that's funny because I read all that stuff on the internet and I kind of sit to myself and laugh, laugh because Allah says in the Quran, had it not been for the grace and mercy of Allah, none of us would get into what we call heaven or Jannah. Now, This thing that we call the Day of Judgment or Yom Qiyama, during the time of the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, and even now, people were disputing of, over what it was. So the Quran says in Surah 75, it says, on that day, the man is going to say, where can I find refuge? It's going to come upon him so fast and so quick, he's not even going to know where it came from. He says, where can I find my refuge? Is there any means of safety here? The Quran says it's going to tell him this day, all of the things you have sent forth as far as goodness will come before you. And all of those things that you have held back as far as greed and selfishness and lying, backbiting, those things too will be shown for you. It is interesting in Surah 24 and 24, I don't know if I put it on your, suit, your sheet, but it's called the nur, the light. The Quran says on Yom Kiyama, your hands, your tongues, your ears, your feet. It says all of these things will bear witness against you on the day of judgment. Think about how scary that is. All of the things that all of your facilities, all of your faculties on the day of judgment, they're going to bear witness against you. You're going to come forth to speak. And Allah says, by no means, shut up. Your facilities or faculties will talk for you now. He says, your tongue is going to tell all of the bad things that you have done. Right? Think about how scary that is. He says, your tongues, he says, all of your slanderous and backbiting ways, he said, is going to come forth and tell on you that day. He says, your hands, think about these, your hands, and all of the dirty stuff that you do when people are not aware. 
it's easy to come here and be righteous, but all of us have private lives that we think no one is aware of. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says he is aware of a very leaf dropping off of a tree. So this on Yom Kiyama, these things are going to tell on you. Your feet, all of the places that you go when you're not here, all of the places that you go when you feel insecure about yourself, when you're in pain, when you go to those places to, to, to soothe yourself, Allah says, on the day of judgment, your feet are going to tell on you. You see, we live in an era of Instagram, Facebook, and my favorite is Snapchat, because you can put something on there and it disappears. Allah says on Yom Kiyama, he still knows and hears and sees everything. So you can erase it there, but you will not be able to hide it from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Secondly, the Quran says in Surah 22, verse 2, it says, O oh, mankind, fear your Lord. He says, every, on that day, every breastfeeding woman is going to forget her baby that she's breastfeeding. He says, every woman that has a, uh, a pregnant woman, he says, she's going to drop her load. He says that the day is going to be that terrifying. He says, man, and this comes from the, the Sunnah. He says, on that day, man is going to be, <sighs> he's going to be panting and breathing because he's worrying now about his account. He's worrying about what he or she has done in their life. Allah says on the day of judgment, people are going to be walking around as they're in a state of intoxication, yet they will not be drunk because all will be fearing those things that they have put forth. You know, it's interesting to me, all of us who are in the military, we come in every day and we work towards our report, our NCOER our OER, and we're constantly doing things to ensure that at the end of the year, we get a good report. My question to you is, do you do that with your religion? Do you do that in this very thing that you say is the most important thing in your life? Allah says on the day of judgment, not some things, Everything that you have done is going to come forth. I want to read something to you here in Surah 101. It says, Elkaria, Melkaria, Wama Adaraka, Melkaria. Yoma Yukunu Nasu, Nasu Kel Farashil Mabethus. It says, On the day of clamor, the day of shaking. He says, what will explain to you what this is? Allah is trying to give us a picture here. He says, it's going to be a day where we are all scattered out like moths. I'm from New Orleans. Is that correct? Moths. He says, the mountains will be like carded wool. He says, they're going to rise up from their roots and be floating around. And then he says, And then he says, He says, And those of us who have put forth a life of good deeds will be judged for those things. And coincidentally, And he says, Of those people who have put forth mostly bad deeds, what, what's going to happen to them? He says they will find their home in the bottomless pit. I'm trying to give you a clear picture here of what you asked for about the Day of Judgment. It's really not a very pleasant thing. The Quran says of us, 
the believers. He said, what stopped you? In Surah 102, El Hakim He said, what stopped you from focusing on your Lord? What were the things that you were vying for? The positions, the ranks, the money, the cars. He said, why did those things detract you from worshiping your Lord? Question to you, believers. Have any of those things made you happy? Have any of those things actually given you peace? I've had all of them. None of them have been able to give me the peace that I get unless I hear my, my, my children tell me they have accomplished something or my wife have accomplished. That's peace because you know you put in the work to try to establish some type of moral life and values for those people who are coming behind you. The new car smell wears off. The house after you show your friends is no good. But what about the internal peace that you get from doing and being the right person? Allah says in Surah 103, by the token of time, surely man is lost. Except who? Except those people who have faith. Except those people who do righteous deeds except those people who join in mutual teachings of what? Patience and constancy. I want you to pay attention to that last part. Patience and constancy. Before you came in, we were talking, and we were talking about the atmosphere now that the Muslims are in. You have a choice. The Quran says, I have shown you two highways. You have a choice. You can buy into all of the hype. You can buy into the hysteria. You can buy into even being scared and not being yourself. Or you can choose like our Rasul, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. He was in the midst of all of that. This stuff has been going on for centuries. It's an ideological war. You can choose to be the best person and focus on the good things in your life, or you can walk around with your head down in shame because the ultimate goal for the Muslim is Jannah. Allah says, how do you get to Jannah? Listen to this. He didn't talk about being political. He didn't talk about amassing wealth. Wealth, Allah says that man has lost Jannah. Why? Because he fed not the poor. He was not kind to his neighbor, Surah 107. And he encouraged not the feeding of the orphan. See, our goals are specific. They're about uplifting humanity. Don't buy into the ideological war that's there. You'll, you'll be overwhelmed. You'll miss what you're supposed to get. You can't control anybody but yourself. I want to go back to the opening ayat that I read to you. And I'm going to tell you why I said what I said at the end. Audhu billahi minash shaitan rajim The Quran says in Surah Fajr, I want you all to go and read this, Surah 15 through 16. <coughs> it says, Fa'amma Allah says of us, as for man, when his Lord, when his Lord tries him with honor and good stuff, he's puffed up with pride and says, see, Allah is God 